There is something very different between velocity and acceleration. It turns out that we don't feel velocity, but we feel acceleration. Let's say you are on a jet airplane without turbulence flying smoothly at 500 miles per hour. You would feel the same as if you are just sitting down in front of your desk. You would not feel like you are traveling that fast at all. Well, even if you are really sitting down in front of your desk, you may think you are not moving, but guess what? You are on the earth and the earth is spinning and it is going around the sun at about 30 kilometers per second, which is about 67,000 miles per hour. At that speed towards the moon, one can reach the moon in just four hours. But you feel like you're just sitting there, not moving at all. However, if you're riding in an accelerating car, you would feel the acceleration. What does your body do when the driver steps on that accelerator hard? Your body will lean backwards. Your body responds to acceleration. You can feel acceleration. The definition for average acceleration, A with a bar on the top, we use A for acceleration, average with the bar on the top means average. This is defined as uh, the change in velocity divided by the changing time. So when we have velocity change, we have acceleration. Acceleration is the rate at which the velocity changes. Let's look at an example. Let's say you got a car. This car starts from rest and it accelerates to 20 meters per second in 4 seconds. The average acceleration would be the change in velocity divided by the change in time. The change in velocity in this case, since we know the car starts from rest, that means the initial velocity is zero. To 20 meters per second, that's the final velocity. If you know the initial velocity and the final velocity, how do you think you'll find the delta V? The delta V is uh, final minus the initial. So it is the final velocity 20 minus the initial velocity 0. The time, remember this is the time duration, so it's uh, 4 seconds. So this becomes 20 meters per second divided by 4 seconds, which gives you 5 meters per second per second. Remember, this is the rate at which velocity changes. So this gives you, on average, the velocity of the car changes at 5 meters per second every second. You can also, of course, write it as 5 meters per second squared. Okay. What if uh, the car, instead of going from rest and speed up, it goes from 20 meters per second, now slows down to 10 meters per second. And all that happens in 3 seconds. This time, the average acceleration for just this period, the three seconds. This will be delta V over delta T. Final minus the initial divided by the time. The final velocity is 10, the initial velocity is 20. The time is, the time duration, three seconds. I'm not including the four seconds, okay, just this part for the three seconds. Okay, this will be negative 10 divided by 3, and what's the unit? Of course, it's uh, meters per second squared. So let's see. That's the average acceleration for the two cases. 
The average acceleration, do you think it is a vector or a scalar? Does it come from a vector or scalar? Velocity is a vector, so the change in velocity is a vector. Therefore, the acceleration would be a vector. So acceleration has a magnitude and a direction. The magnitude, of course, is the 5 meters per second squared. What do you think the direction is? Since it's positive 5, that means it's in the positive direction. This, this one has a magnitude and the direction is the negative sign. It's in the negative x direction. So let's say if this is your x-axis. For the, the first case, the car starts from rest and speeds up in the positive x direction. See, the velocity is positive, meaning the car travels in the positive direction. When the car travels in the positive direction and it speeds up, its acceleration is in the same direction. But when a car slows down, see both this positive velocity, positive velocity, meaning the car is traveling in the positive x direction. It's just getting slower. When that happens, its acceleration is negative. So when an object travels and slows down, its velocity and acceleration, they will be in opposite directions. But if it's speeding up, the velocity and acceleration will be in the same direction. Now let's say you are in a car traveling that way, and the driver slams on the brakes. What would your body do? You would lean forward, right? So let's see. When the car accelerates that way, the velocity and the acceleration are in the same direction because the car is speeding up. And your body leans backwards. When the car is going forward and slowing down, it is, its acceleration is in the opposite direction. And your body leans forward. Which means, for some reason, our bodies lean in the direction that's opposite to the direction of acceleration. However, if you take a helium balloon with you to the right in the car, pay attention to the helium balloon and you will find that the helium balloon leans in a direction opposite to our leaning. Why do you think that happens? When you are in a car accelerating forward, speeding up, your velocity goes forward and the acceleration will be in the same direction as the velocity. So the acceleration goes forward and you lean backwards. And actually, everything in the car has a tendency to lean backwards. Okay, the air, the helium balloon, all of those. When you compete against the air, you're going to win because you are denser than the air. So you get to lean backwards, the air has to get out of the way. But the helium balloon is not as dense as the air, so when the air wants to lean backwards, the helium balloon is the one that gets out of the way. So the helium balloon leans forward in the same direction as the acceleration. Now, I'm not taking a helium balloon to a car ride, but I have this. This is a piece of styrofoam in a bottle of water. I colored it so you can see it better. Okay, it's tied at the end of a string and then the other end of the string is fixed right here. Okay, now this is kind of like a helium balloon in air. The styrofoam in water, the styrofoam is not as dense as the water. Okay, so it would behave just like helium balloon would behave in air. So, this piece of styrofoam is going to lean in the same direction as the acceleration, which means that conveniently it will tell you the direction of acceleration. Okay, now I'm going to accelerate the bottle to the right. So, the styrofoam will show you the direction of acceleration. Okay, at 
first, I had to accelerate to the right. The acceleration goes to the right, the foam leans to the right. But then for the second part of the trip, I had to slow down so I can come to a stop. While the bug was moving to the right and slowing down to a stop, what do you think is the direction of acceleration? Yep, it goes to the left. So for the first part of the trip, the styrofoam leans to the right. For the second part of the trip, it leans to the left because it has to slow down to a stop. Right? Okay. Now if I go the other way, it will be the opposite. At first it has to speed up and then it has to slow down to a stop. So let's see. Is that right? Okay, let me do it again. And then, okay. The last thing on our agenda for this video is this. You're riding in a car on a curvy road. The cruise control keeps the car going at 50 miles per hour. Constant speed. Is your acceleration zero? If you answered no, then you're right. If the car is on a curve, your body would respond by leaning. Which way does your body lean? You would lean outward, right? This means you do have an acceleration. Because we lean in a direction that's opposite to the direction of acceleration. While you are on a curve, which direction do you think your acceleration is in? That will be inward, right? Okay, why do we have an acceleration even though our speed doesn't change? Because average acceleration is the change in velocity divided by the change in time. Velocity is a vector, which means that it includes a magnitude and a direction. The speed is the magnitude part. When the speed doesn't change, the magnitude doesn't change. But if the car is on a curve, that means the velocity is constantly changing direction. If the direction of the velocity is changing, the velocity is changing, regardless whether the speed stays the same or not. So if you are on a curve, there is acceleration that goes inward. And I can show you that with this bottle. Okay, if I put the bottle on a curve, the piece of styrofoam should point to the direction of the acceleration. Now I'm dizzy, but I hope you saw that the styrofoam leaned toward the center, showing you that there indeed was an acceleration that goes towards the center.